Thank you very much, folks. Thanks for having me here. I'm going to stand up here only so I can push the button and change the pictures. Um, I think that uh, I, I hope that I can take a few minutes and uh, share with you some things that you find useful and interesting. Uh, pictures always make it a little bit more interesting, so we'll do some of those. Um, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about, um, about the company, about the American Queen Steamboat Company. Uh, it's amazing around the world, uh, people that knew the name Delta Queen, when we're out marketing this product today, how many people think it's a dinner boat. Um, they have no idea what it really is. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that so that you have a little bit of a perspective of the impact that we make on our hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, as well as many of your towns. Uh, some of them we haven't been to yet this year. Um, then I want to tell you a little bit uh, after that about the hard road my partners and I experienced trying to finance uh, the relaunch of the American Queen over a, nearly two years of planning and seeking lenders who mostly looked at us like we had three heads when we said we wanted to borrow $30 million to restart a company that had gone bankrupt twice already. Um, and, um, uh, but we finally reached success in August of 2011, specifically because of the vision, the energy, the leadership um, of Mayor Wharton and his team in Memphis um, that brought the American Queen Steamboat Company to Memphis and made it our home. So, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the business and I want to talk to you a little bit about the climate and the transaction um, and the interaction of all the entities that made this happen in Memphis. And before we get to that part, you'll see a little bit of, uh, of the impact on the city that our company being there makes. Um, a couple of statistics, I mean the vessel is um, a medium-sized vessel, 436 passengers. It's not a 3,500, 4,500 uh, person princess ship that when you come out of your stateroom and look down the hall, you can't even see the other end of the hallway on the one hand, but it's not an 80 passenger vessel like runs around in, uh, in Alaska either. It's a medium sized vessel, enough to make an impact um, on the economy, but also enough to um, um, be able to afford uh, economics that work for great entertainment, great dining, great management and such. We also have 182 crew members on board. Um, on board. What that drives is about 275 crew members, uh, almost 300 jobs for those positions that we hired to be able to run the vessel because they work six weeks on the vessel and two weeks off and they have to be replaced when they're off. The boat, as many of you know, was built in 1995 by the Delta Queen Steamboat Company. Uh, cost $69 million to build it then. The replacement value now is $97 million. Um, after the last um, turn of events, our company was able to buy it for $15.5 million from the Federal Maritime Administration. Um, quite a, an advantageous capital situation. Uh, we put about six, almost $7 million in renovations into the vessel before we started sailing in April of, uh, of this year. It sails about 5,000 miles of America's Heartland Rivers, 11 months a year. Uh, mostly week-long trips, uh, the entire Mississippi, all the way to St. Paul, I'll show you. Uh, you all know the map better than most of the audiences that I get to speak to, which are usually travel agents from all over the world that really don't get it about geography as much as you'd think their profession would. But you all understand the geography of the river, so um, I'll skip over that quickly. We carry about 19,000 guests per year on the vessel. Uh, they come from all over the world, about 85% of them are Americans and Canadians, uh, but 15% of them come from the UK, Australia, uh, New Zealand, and particularly because of their affinity for cowboys, Indians, and blues music. We have a wonderful trail of uh, tourist groups from Germany who want to ride out of Memphis on the American Queen because they know about blues music. Um, Americans don't understand much about blues music, but the German people do. Uh, and they come to Memphis because we promote the vessel as something that will give them blues music themed cruises and, uh, and they love it. We bring almost 10,000 guests uh, a year to Memphis and uh, unlike most cruise lines, we include a deluxe hotel stay before you board the vessel. Our customers are Americans over 50, the average age is about 65, and people don't want to miss the boat. 
They don't want to miss an airplane connection, get there late, be all wound up and miss the boat. So um, the company in the past, you would fly and get on the boat and leave, and you really wouldn't experience the embarkation city. Um, and we changed that. So when people are boarding the vessel in Memphis, when they're boarding in St. Paul, Minnesota, when they're boarding in Cincinnati or St. Louis or Pittsburgh, they really get a taste of the city where you embark because we've got about 36 hours there with people in a great hotel. Um, in 2012, we only had 10 cruises that came and went from Memphis, about 4,000 high-end visitors. And when I say high-end, the impact that we make on a town when we come there, these are people that are paying us approximately $7,000 for a week for two people. Um, it's different than a Caribbean cruise, almost everything's included, including all their shore excursions uh, to the towns where we stop. 50% of the experience is on the vessel, and when you see some of the photos, those of you who haven't been on this vessel, you'll see how beautiful and period uh, that it is with the antiques and the, and the design work. But 50% of the experience is off the vessel, in your towns. Um, people want to learn about the heartland of America and the history of things that happened there and the contemporary happenings that are there. And um, so we're, we're in the business of storytelling, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the business that we're in in a moment. But our, our visitors are well-educated, well-traveled, relatively well-heeled, curious people who don't want a week at the beach necessarily. They want to learn something while they're having a vacation. Um, and so this year, with a short startup year that began only in mid-April, uh, we only brought uh, 10 cruises to Memphis. Next year will be 24 cruises that come and go from Memphis. Uh, I'm using Memphis as an example. I want to single out one city in our hometown city to give you an idea of the impact of this kind of business happening in a river town, um, the impact it makes. Um, in Memphis next year, almost 10,000 visitors that are boarding there, almost 5,000 deluxe hotel room nights that we buy and include, um, about 7,000 airport arrival and departure passengers that we generate, about 70% of our customers fly, and that's another story that Memphis is challenged with that uh, we're trying to help make a difference with. Um, about $3.8 million in local spending by the visitors before they board the vessel or after they get off the vessel before they leave to go home in meals, admissions, gift purchases and such. A lot of barbecue is eaten by our 10,000 people that come to Memphis every year. 300 new jobs created, and uh, when I talk about the transaction in a moment, I'll get into that in a little bit of detail. 50% of them were hired in Memphis. Um, about 100 new hires in addition to that every year because people that um, live in a very small environment on board, work 12 to 14 hours a day, are away from home for six weeks at a time. Some of them stick with it for a while. Some of them say after about two or three months, this isn't for me. Uh, and so we're always hiring, always hiring. But the great thing is that when somebody works for us for six or eight months, has been through our very, very high-end professional hospitality training programs and all of their supervisory feedback and their bonuses that are tied to great hospitality service, they can decide to go back home and get a job at the Peabody, get a job at the Westin, go out to California and get a job at a, at a major resort or Las Vegas because they've got a resume now. Um, and so the hundred or so new jobs every year that we're always turning over is not bad news for the economy. It's, a, it's actually quite strong. Um, about $9 million a year in annual local payroll, and once again, all with full benefits. This is not something like Indonesians and Filipinos that work on a carnival ship that make $12 a day in tips, um, and they can see the ship's doctor if they hurt their toe. I mean, these people have the full Blue Cross Blue Shield medical program that all of our executive management does, a company-supported 401k program. Um, it's, uh, it's a real job. Um, we also generate about $1.7 million a year in port taxes uh, that we turn over to the city of Memphis to fund the retirement of the debt on Beale Street Landing. Um, let me find my way back to our next picture. Here we go. Um, worldwide marketing, the uh, exposure that we give to river cities and what there is along, uh, along the Ohio, Mississippi, Tennessee River structure worldwide. Uh, we have about 80,000 visits to our website a week. Uh, we had 13,000 of them alone the day that we christened the vessel, rechristened the vessel in Memphis with Priscilla Presley as the new godmother uh, of the vessel. CNN, uh, one of our investors 
was uh, in Memphis for the event, left and the, a day and a half later was in Bahrain and sent me an email that he was watching the christening of the American Queen on television in Bahrain. Um, uh, 60,000 brochure requests a year. We have 120,000 travel agencies around the world uh, that represent the American Queen Steamboat Company and sell the product. We have formal general sales agencies in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Germany. Uh, and as I mentioned, we're, we're doing very well in 2013 with groups of Germans coming for blues music in the Delta South. Um, tourists all around the world through their interest in a genuine, iconic, American experience, steamboating on the Heartland Rivers and the American Queen. They learn about the places that we go that they never heard of or knew nothing about. Um, from Red Wing to La Crosse, Wisconsin to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, they learn about what there is to do there and the exposure happens. The experiences are, they have their share of drama, everything from Hannibal, Missouri, painting Tom Sawyer's fence to um, the beautiful, beautiful scenery in the upper Mississippi River. There are awe-inspiring events. We're docked, up, docked here every year on the 4th of July for the greatest fireworks exhibition in the world. Uh, and the Blue Angels experience, sitting on the top deck of the American Queen, having that experience here in St. Louis is a pretty fun event. Um, experience in B.B. King's on Blue Street, uh, on Beale Street. Um, they're wondrous uh, sights to see. The first time people from Orange County, California, or Connecticut uh, look off the deck in the morning and rub their eyes and, and were tied up at the levee and they're looking up that oak alley at, um, um, at Oak Alley Plantation is a pretty amazing experience. Um, I'll, I'll mention uh, in a minute, and when I go through a list of the business that we're in, uh, one of the things that I told the Memphis Chamber of Commerce a couple months ago is we're in the business of teaching Yankees about the South. Um, they thought that was a hoot. Um, they're moving experiences from the swamps in Louisiana, and we do swamp tours, uh, the wildlife along the river, um, some, of the, uh, some of the more historic sites. The American experience is locking through as we were talking at our breakfast table. People flock to the Panama Canal on ships to be able to buy cruises to see how the locks work. And we tell them, you don't have to go to Panama to see how the locks work. From St. Louis, Missouri to St. Paul, Minnesota, there are 27 locks that you have to go through all along the Ohio River. Uh, Mayor Wharton doesn't know anything about that. Down where he lives, they don't have any of that stuff. The river just does its own thing. Uh, but up here, it's a little bit different. So the locking through experience is a, a fascinating thing for people. Um, the return of an American legend, and it truly is. You know, years ago, I was in Maracaibo and saw a dinner boat called the Delta Queen. There is a Delta Queen dinner boat in the Hamburg Harbor in Germany. I mean, there are things about American iconic history. Cowboys, Indians, steamboats uh, are on the top of the list that people all over the world know about. It's all the other little things that they come to know when they come here and experience it, like what happens in your river towns historically as well as today. Um, it is a return of an American legend. It's the largest, the grandest, and the most opulent steamboat that was ever built. It took two years in historical research just to design the vessel in 1993 through 1995. It's the only authentic paddle wheel steamboat offering overnight cruises in America. Uh, back at the former Delta Queen Steamboat Company, and I was president of that company when I worked for Sam Zell, who was the owner in the 1990s when we built the American Queen. And the um, uh, engineering team from the Delta Queen took their own weekends and their own time and went up in the Missouri River and raised the dredge boat Kennedy that sunk there and salvaged the steam engines out of it and completely rebuilt and reconstituted those old 19th century steam engines and we built them into the American Queen um, in the shipyard in Louisiana when the vessel was built. And you go in the engine room bar and down the back staircase today and you hang out with the engineers with those great big 19th century steam engines whooshing and pushing on both sides of you. It's a really, really terrific experience. It's the real thing. She carries forward the 122 year legacy of the Delta Queen Steamboat Company. And um, in 2008 through 2012, when the steamboats left the river, um, probably many of you know this, but it's a surprise to a lot of people that it's the first time in 200 years that there wasn't overnight steamboat uh, travel on the Mississippi uh, River system. So she is better than ever. We spent six and a half million dollars, almost 80% of it on uh, mechanicals. The hotel was in perfect condition. 
Um, the um, uh, interior things all got new bedding and new ultra plush 500 count cotton sheets and such, all new outdoor quality wicker furniture. Um, we converted several bars to alternative dining venues. Uh, guests want a lot of choices now. You used to only be able to go to the main dining room. Now you can do that and have a relatively formal a la carte meal three times a day, or you can go to the front porch of America and have carved ribs or sandwiches and go to the river grill up under the calliope on the fifth deck after the vessel and have a moonlight dinner watching the river trail behind the paddle wheel behind you. Uh, lots of choices. Lots and lots of entertainment, um, and I'll talk to you about that in a moment, and all period furnishings. I'll show you a couple of staterooms on board. Um, most of them have French doors that open out onto promenade decks that go around the vessel with old wicker furniture outside. It's a socialization thing. People that travel on small vessels like to meet each other. If you're on a 4,000 person princess ship, maybe you get to know the people you sit with at dinner. But here, there are neighborhoods on the vessel that people get to interact with each other. There are some cabins with private balconies like this, but most of them opened onto promenade decks. Some have uh, bay windows, and there are a small number of single rooms and inside cabins uh, for people on a budget. The pricing on the cruises goes by the level and size of the cabin you have. Everything else is the same. Everything else is included. This is the Grand Saloon on board. We have a lot of entertainment, a lot of education events, a lot of lectures all throughout cruises. This is a replica of Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Finest cuisine, period. Our um, uh, chef de cuisine, Regina Charbonneau from Natchez, Mississippi, um, writes about Southern cuisine for Atlantic Monthly. He's published a number of uh, coffee table books on Southern cuisine. Uh, went to Cordon Bleu in Paris, owned several restaurants in San Francisco. Uh, the dining experience is pretty exceptional and people, uh, people are looking forward to that. We try to give them regional specialties. We have a couple of blues and barbecue cruises coming up uh, that leave from Memphis for people to experience uh, some of our local specialties. But all through the country, we're, we're including local cuisine and local dishes, even five-way chili in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, this is a shot of the J.M. White formal dining room on board. And uh, the J.M. White was the grandest steamboat ever built in the 19th century. And we did an absolute accurate recreation of the dining room from the J.M. White vessel on board the American Queen. You know, in the 1830s, 1840s, um, the wealth from cotton and sugar um, in the Delta South was so enormous um, there were 12, 13 millionaires in North America in 1840, and seven of them lived in Natchez, Mississippi. Um, and so people that traveled on steamboats on the river liked to have San Francisco-style hotel accommodations, and the J.M. White was built to provide that, and we built the J.M. White's dining room into the American Queen. It's really quite spectacular. Uh, as I mentioned, the food is something to remember. I, I won't make you sit there and read the menus, but I thought I'd just tease you a little bit if you can read at that distance with a couple of wonderful things that happen on board in the cuisine. This is the front porch of America, indoor, outdoor dining as you sail along the river. Um, and in terms of value, um, we tried to include everything. Uh, the pre uh, luxury um, uh, hotel stay, complimentary shore adventures. You don't want to take people, people just for a boat ride. They want to experience the heartland of America and they want to learn about it. Um, and so uh, we have a fleet of steam coaches, brand new 55 passenger vessels we've shrink wrapped to look like the American Queen and they follow us 11 months of the year along the rivers um, and they uh, uh, they provide step on step off tours in every city and town that we visit as well as some Premium tours, those are all included for our guests. Complimentary wine and beer at dinner, latte and espresso machines around the vessel. Uh, the only steamboat with uh, uh, no upcharge for dining and other venues besides the main dining room. The, um, uh, as I mentioned, all the dining venues on board, extensive live entertainment. We carry uh, river Lorians on board the vessel. They are historians of the rivers and the towns, and they tell stories all throughout the journey. Uh, we say we're in the edutainment business. Um, we want to teach people about the history of the parts of America that we travel through and, and make it an exciting, uh, entertaining event for them. Uh, music, food, history lectures, 
We just completed a series of Civil War history cruises in partnership with the American Experience television show on PBS. Uh, next year, Ken Burns and Rick Burns are lecturers on board the American Queen in our Civil War history cruises between Vicksburg and Chattanooga. Um, uh, everything that appeals to people that are our target audience from around the world. Not only the blues music for the Germans, but we have our first Great American Hootenanny cruises this November between St. Paul and St. Louis uh, with Judy Collins and the Kingston Trio on board entertaining people who graduated from high school in the 1960s. Um, so the geography I think most of you know about and the activity level, there's everything from Zumba exercises on board and bicycles that you can take and ride on the levee to doing this if this is what you would rather be doing uh, on your vacation. And this, this, they all fit pretty well. Um, the, the music and the culture along the way and the locks, as I mentioned, are all happening for everyone. Um, this is my favorite picture. Um, we believe that most of our target customers are engaged in spending their time and their money on goods and services every day and being treated with relative indifference. You all experience that yourselves. And we said that we had a hiring policy um, when, um, when we had our first job fair in Memphis, Tennessee and hired 174 people in two days. And we said that we wanted to hire for attitude and train for aptitude. We said that if your mama didn't raise you right, we're not gonna fix that. Um, we want people that smile, make eye contact, use the customer's name, say please and thank you, and they mean it. And you can tell when it wasn't just training. You can tell when you're treated that way if somebody means it. And so we were lucky to hire 174 people in Memphis, and we struggled for two months teaching them how to serve to the right and take away from the left, because most of the people we hired were genuinely, wonderfully warm human beings, but had never even been in a fine dining restaurant. And at our per diems of $500 a night, the dining experience is expected to be quite exquisitely delivered. And so we are just now catching up with having trained all those folks over months to be able to deliver a great, uh, a great service experience with precision and timing. But what we got from day one was this, people that are nice people that make you feel welcome uh, every moment that you're there. And in the long run, besides being a beautiful vessel with great furniture and great food and everything else, we think that that, that wins out over everything for us. Um, I was a little bit chagrin um, on our first shakedown training cruise that we didn't have hot soup and that uh, service was sloppy and forks and glasses were dropped and all of that and I was challenging myself on that philosophy of hiring for attitude and training for service. And our largest single private investor, Pitt Hyde, the founder of AutoZone Stores that Mayor Wharton introduced us to when we first came to Memphis, um, came up to me and I said, you know, Pitt, I'm really sorry, you know, we kind of flubbed it on this first training cruise. We're not very proud of the service product we're doing. We said we were train hiring for attitude and training for service and he put his finger in my face and he said, don't you change that philosophy. You stick with that. It'll come around. I built my business on that and your customers will come back again and again and again because of this. Um, and the training to make them serve from the right and take away from the left, that comes, but you can't teach people how to do this. Um, it's something we're pretty proud of. Um, so where do we travel? We talked about it all through the antebellum south, uh, week-long trips between Memphis and New Orleans, stopping at Natchez, Vicksburg, St. Francisville, Baton Rouge, um, giving people a wonderful experience and learning about the antebellum south and its food and history and its contemporary life. Um, going up and down the, the river uh, from the, in, in that part of the country, we're there about 40% of the year in the spring and the winter and the fall. Uh, the vessel travels 11 months a year, but uh, about 40% of the time we're down in this part of the country between Memphis and New Orleans. Then we go up here um, in the fall. We travel uh, the beautiful, beautiful upper Mississippi, leave the brown water and go into the green water uh, where there are beaches and bonfires and all the wonderful things you folks in this part of the country know about. Um, another piece of geography that, uh, you know, it's amazing how many Americans uh, don't know the Mississippi River uh, comes all the way from Minnesota. <laughs> they don't, they just don't know. Uh, so they come with us and they learn. Um, all of September and October we're in uh, St. Louis and St. Paul and next year we're up there in July and August a little bit also. Our home port of Memphis, um, uh, 
exploring um, also the Ohio and Tennessee rivers to Chattanooga and all the way to Pittsburgh. Um, seven night trips Memphis to St. Louis, uh, five nights between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Um, and so we tell our customers and our travel agents that no matter what your guests have, uh, have done before, they've never done anything quite like this. This is a, a real piece of Americana and it's something people have to, uh, have to experience. Uh, the hospitality part um, is, um, is very important, but the storytelling and introducing people to what's special and unique about the little towns along the rivers uh, is a big part of what we do with our River Lorians, our special lecturers on board. Um, so we're glad that um, what happened in uh, putting our deal together in Memphis uh, was possible. Um, there's some things that I want to, uh, I think are pertinent to share with you. Um, we, we were asked to comment on what we're doing about ecology issues uh, along the river. And um, we think that that is a, uh, a really, really important uh, part of our whole business plan. Uh, the river is our home, it's our lifeblood. Our customers are curious, they're aware, interested and demanding of our environmental proactivity. Um, they're in our face about it. Um, they vote with their feet, and our goal is to have a 25% repeat factor with customers, so we listen to them and pay attention to what they're aware of. We have a win-win partnership with our customers. We protect the rivers, and we expose our customers to the ecological challenges the river face. Um, in turn, they come to respect us, they come back, and they also go home more aware of how and why they can be engaged in protecting the rivers. And so what you read in a newspaper about the river system or the Great Lakes um, is a different thing from time to time or it isn't real to people uh, when we get them out on the river and they can see for themselves and they can learn from the lectures from um, Civil War historians to Army Corps of Engin Engineers personnel that teach people how the locks work, how the commerce works on the river. Um, it's, uh, it, it's an educational experience that gets people engaged in uh, wanting to support the same agendas that you all have, that we all have. Um, some of the actions that we've taken recently on board the, the vessel and with the business, um, we just in the month of July spent $85,000 um, relamping re the entire vessel. We replaced um, 1,900 light bulbs that were incandescent, 40 to 100 watt light bulbs on board the vessel. Uh, now the largest light bulb on, with all with LED lighting. Now the largest wattage of any light bulb on the vessel is eight watts. Um, in the process, we reduced the electrical draw on the vessel by 360 amps. Uh, we reduced diesel generator fuel burn by up to 1,300 gallons of diesel fuel a day. Um, there were, uh, we used to burn about 4,200 gallons a day of diesel fuel. The vessel was propelled uh, by steam from the paddle wheel, but also by Z drives, and we have diesel electric generators on board. So by relamping the vessel and reducing the electrical draw, we save um, um, almost $5,000 a day in diesel fuel that we don't purchase because of running one generator instead of three generators to run all the electrical on board the vessel. The heat that we don't create, the emissions that we don't create by that change, um, plus running on one generator, we save a substantial amount of money in long-term maintenance uh, cost for, uh, for the equipment. Uh, the, the point to that is that there's an ROI in ecological consciousness for a business. Um, you can get a return by planning uh, to do things that take an investment but have less emissions and have less heat that they generate uh, and burn less fuel in the process. Um, we've implemented reductions in garbage, waste, and exposure to crew injury from hauling waste and, and to exposure to disease from sewage contact on board the vessel. So how have we done that? We've forced our providers, our provisioners, to only sell us food goods that are packaged in biodegradable bags as opposed to tin cans. Um, we've reduced um, uh, the heavy garbage that comes off the vessel uh, by the packaging. Um, we, we, have, um, um, we, we have need for some help from some of the towns with our recycling program on board. 
Um, everybody's got dumpsters we can rent that hauls things to landfills, but anybody that's got a recycling program in their river town, uh, we want to learn more about that because it's, it's a shame for us to go through all the recycling on board the vessel and then have the stuff end up in a landfill anyway uh, when we take it off the vessel. So we'll be talking to all of you uh, about trying to help us with that where it's possible. Um, we have uh, our sewage systems on board this past year when we rebuilt the vessel were completely converted to Coast Guard and IMO approved treatment systems um, uh, compliant with the American Clean Waters Act. Plus we installed a very, very high tech uh, Danish built incinerator on the vessel. And you would say, well, it takes fuel to run that. It makes emissions. So how does that help anything? Um, what it does is we dehydrate um, food waste from our galley. You know, feeding six, seven hundred people three meals a day makes a little bit of food waste. And you're not in town, you're out on the river, so what are you going to do with it? Well, we dehydrate it and we put it in an incinerator and we burn it. And it, um, it takes the, the weight of the wet food waste that we're not hauling off the vessel into landfills every day. We're not injuring crew members with the hard, hard work it takes to go up uh, levees and ramps, hauling all of that heavy stuff. Uh, we're not exposing them to the, uh, uh, the vermin that goes along with uh, hauling garbage off a vessel. Um, in addition to our new sewage plant, there is no raw sewage ever, ever, that is dumped into the river off of the American Queen. Um, also, our treatment program includes microbes that eat uh, the solids as opposed to heavy, heavy chemical treatments that aren't wonderful either when you dump them into the river even though the waste is purified. Um, there are no sewage holding tanks on board like many, many vessels have. And crew have uh, opportunities to uh, have spills and dump raw sewage into the river when you have holding tanks and you're transferring to land-based treatment facilities. Um, we also recently, as Mayor Wharton knows, have gotten involved ecologically in protecting the cottonwood trees along the river because of some local vocal activists that want to save the trees in Memphis when uh, we had to tie up, as people have for 200 years, calling it choking a stump. Um, boats all along the rivers, as, as most of you know, have tied up to trees ever since boats started operating on the rivers. Well, we put carpet samples around the trees and pad them before we tie our tie-up ropes to them. Um, I didn't want to tell some of our local tree savers in Memphis that cottonwoods are weeds anyway. They didn't really want to hear that, I don't think. Um, so, um, you know, our, our ecological uh, efforts uh, reach out to uh, whatever it takes. Um, so the Memphis story, I will tell you very, very briefly, in, in March of 2011, um, we had been engaged in about a year and a half, my two partners and I, and trying to raise funds, as I mentioned, one major bank after another laughed at us uh, and said, are you kidding? Um, we had spent about eight months with the state of Mississippi uh, Economic Development Department in uh, trying to raise um, some investment capital and funds in buying the vessel, refurbishing the vessel, starting the company back up. Um, uh, and then uh, they had some restrictive uh, issues that would have um, curtailed our visiting Memphis as often as we really wanted to. And so we, we called the Economic Development Department in Nashville and said we'd like to come to talk to the folks in Tennessee before um, we completed a deal. And uh, they said, well, if you're going to talk about economic development for a riverboat in Tennessee, you need to know the folks in Memphis. And so they made the appointments for us. We met and went, went and met with the chamber uh, and sent them our business plan to the Nashville folks first. Met with the, Econo with the um, um, Chamber of Commerce folks in Memphis one morning and they went through our business plan with us. And of course, they knew all about Beale Street Landing having been funded and no boats then coming. And we, we were a little naive. We didn't really know the local economics of that happening. And they said, you need to meet Mayor Wharton. And they made an appointment that afternoon and we went over to meet the mayor. And so I'm five minutes into explaining our business plan to Mayor Wharton when the county mayor, Mayor Luttrell, walked in and I thought, oh, I got to start all over. And Mayor Wharton said, no, 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 you don't. And he presented our whole business plan to Mayor Luttrell. He read it. He understood it. He knew the numbers. He knew the numbers as well as we did. He also had a vision beyond what we at the time were seeing 
is about how the marriage of the American Queen Steamboat Company and the city of Memphis and the Beale Street Landing Project and jobs for people that were unemployed in Memphis in the hospitality industry, having a worldwide iconic cruise line headquartered in his city, um, how all those things worked for, how there could be a win-win scenario there. Um, and so he proceeded to introduce us to Robert Lipscomb, the economic development fellow for the city, and then uh, to pull together the uh, local um, private equity investor group of the, uh, the wealthy investor population in the city. It, we, I don't know how we ever would have met these people. I don't know how we ever would have gotten connected to Pitt Hyde and the other economic investment, the people that could invest in a project like this, the people that had money, do investing, uh, and also have a passion for things that work for their city. So it was a mixture of federal money, city initiative, um, private investor money, local banking money, and it all came together. Even the banks that told us no came in after those scenarios, after the HUD loan that we got from the city, um, the uh, uh, port tax that we decided to levy to retire the bond uh, investment for Beale Street Landing, but the private investor money and then the banks came in. So it all became possible and we proceeded to make a commitment to hire our people in Memphis. Um, we committed that we would uh, also uh, achieve a certain amount of vendors for the company from Memphis. Vendors that we could use in New Orleans or we could use other places, but we committed to use them in Memphis. So um, the long story short, it became a serious win-win opportunity, and it was the vision of Mayor Wharton and his uh, administration that pulled all the right people together and made it happen. And so we're, we're not only grateful, but we think, once again, everybody wins. Certainly when you come on board, and I hope all of you will, uh, as we get to your cities and towns on the American Queen, and you meet people like that woman that you saw in the picture, and they greet you and make you feel at home right away. Uh, most of those people are from Memphis, and most of those people have full-time jobs with great benefits, um, and, uh, and it's just a wonderful scenario all around. And closing quickly, I want to mention that uh, I was asked to comment uh, on advice to other recreation companies on keeping the rivers pristine and healthy. And my advice for them would be specifically to invest in it in every way you can figure it out. It, it helps your operation. Uh, it help, your operation will improve. Your staff recruiting and retention will be better because people want to be associated with companies that act positively toward um, um, environmental issues. Your employees are watching what you do every day. Uh, and when they see that uh, the leadership in our company really cares about making a difference in the, uh, in the ecology of the rivers, um, that's a positive thing for them. It is amazing how many of our customers are cruising on board and have a hundred questions about what we're doing to help clean up the river and not pollute the river. What do we do with our garbage? How much fuel are you burning? How do you control your emissions? It's amazing how they want to know the answers to that. We even have engineering lectures on board that are fairly well attended, that we teach people the answers to all of those questions. Um, and so the return on investment for having an, um, a, a clean operation and helping the river to, uh, uh, to be pristine, the ROI is there. Um, and you'll like yourself better too. And that, so that's, I think, the advice that I would give to other recreation companies. Don't be shy about investing. Um, it's not just do-good or it has an ROI as a business. Um, and so on your organization, on this organization's goal, um, which I have read is to make the Mississippi River a natural priority once again, um, uh, be reinforced in your objective and consider the following statement in his editorial in September 7th edition, just last week in the Wall Street Journal, the Saturday essay by uh, Robert Kaplan. And last Saturday it was titled, Geography Strikes Back. And this is a quote from Robert Kaplan. He said, to understand today's global conflicts, forget economics and technology and take a hard look at a map. Why are, the world's preem why are we the world's preeminent power? Americans tend to think that it is because of who we are. I would suggest that it is also because of where we live. In the last resource-rich part of the temperate zone settled by Europeans at the time of the Enlightenment, with more miles of navigable inland waterways than the rest of the world combined. 
Now I'd like to go back and see how Kaplan added all that up, but it's a pretty profound statement. Um, so you are right to know and understand that this is indeed worth working to protect. Um, thank you very, very much for letting me come and tell you about our company, tell you about the successful partnership we formed with the River City of Memphis, um, the, the enlightened and visionary leadership that that city has that made it possible for this business to occur, for these jobs to be created, for the focus on all of your towns and cities worldwide in our marketing uh, to be possible, and for us to be able to bring visitors to your river cities and towns. It all started with the vision of the leadership in Memphis. Thank you very much. Good to be here with you. Uh, We'll follow up and be in touch with you, and some of you have already been invited by Captain Sutton when the boat comes to your town to come on board. We really want you and your team to come on board and see the vessel uh, and meet our team. It's a partnership all along the river, and we, we want you with us there. Do you, I have a question. Uh, do you have a particular branch of your business that deals with cities and, and, and their community relations and, and working with City Hall? Um, not a particular department. We're a startup company. We're kind of busy and mean, so we don't have a government affairs person uh, per se. Uh, but I'm engaged in that. My other two partners are engaged in that. Captain Sutton on board the American Queen is a very proactive uh, reach router um, to all of the towns uh, that we service. He was the captain on the American Queen back five years ago before it stopped sailing, and he's delighted to be back on the river. So. We're, we're doing, and we have a product development department that is setting up all of the tours that we do in the river cities and towns. They are out there in the towns from time to time, uh, finding out what is unique and special to do here that we need to introduce people to. So I, I guess it gets done in all of those ways. We're at Lockingham 24, so if we know you're coming to the town, we'll be there. If we know. <laughs> she said, if, if, uh, can you repeat your question? I'm sorry. Our town is located at Lockett Dam 24. Oh, okay, okay. And if we know you're coming, the town will be there. Oh, wonderful. Well, I have to tell you, that's one of the biggest hits for our customers. Um, they love to be greeted when they come to your town. It makes them feel special. Um, you know, they're just another person in their own town. When they come to your town, they make them feel special. It's pretty great. So we'll make sure that we're doing good communication with your chamber and, uh, and with the lock masters with the Army Corps. Yes, sir. Uh, I, you might have some kind of a PR department you don't know about because I got invited to have breakfast Sunday morning and I presume that probably came from our convention and visitors or all that. No. Oh, I presume so. Somebody that somebody took the trouble to invite me two or three weeks when I was supposed to meet at the Sunday. You know, if we haven't done it, I'll make sure that we send to each of your offices and to the CBBs our 2013 sailing schedule so that everybody knows exactly what times and days and we're going to be arriving. That's easy to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. We do have to move upstairs now, folks, uh, to hear from the guests we have on the